In this video I'm going to talk about coordinate system transformations. And so what I have here is uh, our original axes which are uh, in the nice vertical and horizontal uh, 90 degrees from each other all that kind of stuff. And we have a vector A here and we can see with these thinner lines uh, where the components of it are. So this is the Y component here and this up here would be the X component. And so then if we want to transform our axes so that they are rotated by some amount, so uh, some, some uh, degrees theta here, and our, our vector A remains the same, uh, now we want to get the, the uh, new coordinates here in the blue in terms of the old coordinates. So we need to write our new coordinates in terms of the old coordinates. So that's what I have here. So we have uh, we have the vector components here in the old coordinates with these black lines. But now we have the new ones here in these blue lines and then in these purple lines we have the new coordinates in terms of the old coordinates. So the new uh, y prime coordinates is equal to uh, is equal to this x amount and this y amount. And so we have this new coordinate, this position right here, in terms of the old coordinates. Uh, and we do the same thing with the x prime coordinates. So this is the x prime. Uh, this is the the x prime component of this vector. So the component in the x direction in the new coordinates. And so from here we want to get where this position is in terms of the x coordinate and in terms of the of the y coordinate. And so we're getting we have to get two positions or two coordinates for each of these new coordinates. We need the y and the x coordinate for each of them. And so one of the ways we can do this is by obtaining the angles between them. So in this, uh, we we want we need the angle, the change in the angle in in terms of the x coordinate and the y coordinate. And so the way we can do this for our new uh, x prime component here. So the first thing we want to do, well, we want to get uh, the whole distance from the origin all the way up to here, uh, but that we can do that by first obtaining this first section of of the coordinate here. Uh, so using this alpha one one here and using this as a right as a right triangle, we can obtain this distance right here uh, by using uh, by using the cosine. So cosine of the alpha one one because that will give us this distance here which is the adjacent down here is the hypotenuse this is the adjacent and so we can obtain this distance using the cosine of alpha one one but now we still need to get go from here to here and to do that we use this uh, this right triangle here in order to obtain this distance here, which will be the same as this distance here. This is a, a rectangle, so the distances are the same. So we can use uh, this triangle here going from this to this to this. And now uh, this is our hypotenuse, this is our adjacent. And so we can use the cosine of this alpha one, two, so alpha one, Two. And we'll do the same thing for uh, for the uh, y prime coordinate, and I have that here. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it's essentially the same thing. We're just doing it for the y coordinate. Uh, but what we end up with is this. And so alpha 1, 1 and alpha 1, 2 are equal to each other, and we can call those equal to theta. So we'll call that theta. 
and so uh, and so the X component is uh, is the alpha one one and the X component of uh, or the Y component of Y the Y component of Y prime in terms of Y is the alpha two two here and so with that we can actually generate uh, if we use these thetas uh, here I'll go up here so we can still see it uh, we can say that that uh, that cosine of alpha 1 1 is equal to cosine of theta and we can say that cosine of alpha 2 2 which is equal to uh, alpha 1 1 is also the cosine of theta and so now we want this alpha one two. Well, we can see that that is is uh, so from y to x is ninety degrees, uh, but we're subtracting out this alpha one one, which is theta. So we can say that it is ninety degrees minus theta. So we can say that cosine of alpha one two is equal to cosine of 90 degrees minus theta and we can say that uh, because sort of the opposite with alpha 2 1 we have 90 degrees here plus alpha 2 2 uh, we'll write that down here so it's a little less crowded so cosine of alpha 2 1 is equal to the cosine of 90 degrees plus theta and so now we have everything uh, that we want in terms of theta and so we can actually make a transformation matrix out of this so uh, so we can say that cosine of alpha 1 1 is one element then cosine of of the alpha 1 2 then we have cosine of alpha 2 1 and cosine of alpha 2 2 and this is our transformation matrix which we can then put that in terms of the cosine which is cosine of theta then cosine of of 90 degrees minus theta then cosine of 90 degrees plus theta then cosine of theta and so we can if we look at these so this is our transformation matrix uh, if we if you remember our our uh, trigonometry here And so we can say that this right here is equal to sine of theta. And this down here is equal to minus sine of theta. Uh, I hope this is, uh, is clear. I, I kind of stumbled through that a little bit. But uh, so essentially what I'm saying, though, is we can then write this matrix as cosine of theta sine of theta minus sine of theta and cosine of theta and so this is our transformation matrix here so whatever we want our to however however far we want to rotate our axes around is what we will input for theta and so we could see that uh, if we multiply this by uh, the X the X uh, component of our of our vector a and the y component of our vector a so this is our vector a here that we will end up with our our a prime X and a prime y so this was our new vector here 
Uh, and so that is uh, sort of the basics here on how we do this uh, coordinate transformation uh, in, in linear algebra. So I hope this was uh, maybe at least somewhat enlightening. Um, and I will see you in another video.